So we wanted to get on here and just do a quick update of what's been happening with this thing. Obviously we've taken quite a bit of um, parts off of it. I've been uh, stripping down parts. I've got Chad's back there cutting up uh, panels for this, but I've just got a little bit left on the edge here on this this uh, front fender. And then he did some metal work. It looks kind of junky, but <laughs> it'll look better when it's all done there. So he had to extend that splash shield. And then he made this today. Pretty just roughed it in. And And that is the wind, the windshield. So, do you want to explain what you're doing? Then get around this car. Well, we are. Besides drinking, about. besides drinking a lot of beer today. <laughs> that's only two. That's not mine. Oh right, uh -huh. you got two up front, by the way. Not today. I'm yeah. Okay, sorry. So what are you doing now? Okay, so here's the way we did this, and I'm, you know, there's probably going to be a bunch of guys out there that do this stuff and should say, you, you, weren't using, you should be using oak. Well, you're right, I should be, but I'm cheap. And uh, this isn't for anybody else, so that's the way it is. This so, is all just personal use, so. Yeah, and the outside will be nice. We're not, it's not like, you know, we're actually going to use them like they did back in the day, so what's the point of building it out of oak that's stinking $40 a board when I could use scraps that I've got laying around basically. So uh, we mocked up this frame just real quick. Uh, we thought about using the 26 cowl but it sticks back about yeah. six eight inches. Well that would be a ridiculous amount of overhang for the the C cab mm -hmm. on the delivery. So we just mocked up this and there should be a bracket here that bolts to it but again we're using two buys instead of one buys again because we're not using oak. We wanted to go with a little thicker, so we're just going with two by fours, which are actually inch and a half versus, I think the oak would probably be a true inch. Uh, welded up this quick bracket to hold the windshield in brace. It'll, it'll do a good job once we get the braces built for down to here. We're just going to use a piece of half inch conduit probably and sandwich it and then bolt it in on each side. And then just tr and then just paint it black. So Yeah. So down here, you know, and I should probably do this not only for my own memory, <laughs> But for anybody else who out there is trying to find a C cab to build, there are not a whole lot of dimensions out there to mess with. So maybe I should go through and, and say all that too. But uh, this will be tapered down right here. This will be cut out and tapered down to this. There's actually a pencil line there. You can't really yeah, see it. Yeah, I just kind of scratched it in. Um, it's 40 inches wide at the base here. This is about 36. And we used, again, higher, uh, uh, wider wood than I think you would normally do because I wanted extra on each side because we're not using oak. So when you're not using oak, I just wanted to beef everything up a little bit more. Uh, you have to cut out up here. There's a brace that comes up in here and you can kind of see where we just barely took a line and we just took the saw and cut a line in there and then just took my roto zip and ground down where the heads to the bolts come through. So you have to do that as well uh, just so that way it'll made up flush otherwise it'll stick out it'll because stick it's out. on the head of the bolt is yeah i guess you already did the other side i was going to say it was stuck out too we just cut these at a 45 and if you ever use a 45 on your saw i don't know about yours but mine they never turn out exactly 45 so you get them close take it apart you know i had it screwed on here to get my measurements then i took it apart and then screwed it together and then reinstalled it so you know Keep that in mind when you cut these grooves down here and whatever else. All that may change, which, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's an eighth of an inch off or something like that, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I mean, like these things are rocket science. And they're 100 years old. Yeah. So then you, have to, <laughs> you also have to cut out for your brake pedal and or your brake lever. And I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to take this off, and I forgot. And when you get down uh, here, you'll have a, the motor mount tranny mount, whatever you want to call it, that you also have to notch out for. Oh, yeah. So keep that in mind. Can and there's also a couple it. of bolts here for the cross braces you have to do I'm right sorry. here and one down there in order to get it all in. So you have to do that on both sides. We went with... 
It's on the ground over here. I can't throw it to you. Now, obviously, you can build these to whatever you want. Uh, you know, I've seen them where they stick out about a foot past the end of the fender. I've seen them where they come even with the fender. I kind of split the difference and went with six inches, which ends up giving me, from end to end, eight feet. So up to where my seat is, it's about six feet. Your seat? Where the seat will yep. be, yeah. So, I just wanted to clarify that real yeah, well, quick this here. Is, this is a little it's, bit off, but I need to... I'll, I'll, I still haven't figured it out. I'll probably jimmy it around a little That'll bit. That'll probably be pretty close to what it will be, though, as far yeah, as... Yeah, pretty six, close. Six feet. And we'll know more as we go along. It, it's kind of a play-it-to-fit type of a thing. All I did is I went on there, and you just used the wheel. You know, I got kind of the... You use something that you know the distance of. The wheels are pretty easy. They're 30 inches across, 31 inches across, actually, uh, from tire to tire. And I just made a little scale from the tire, the tire ring, uh, the rim, see. the mount, the hub. So that way, when I measure, I could use the wheel as a scale. And then I just looked at pictures online and uh, just basically made a little sketch. So like when I did it at home, you can see that that one says uh, floor, bottom, full wheel, tire to outside ring. So in other words, it was a full wheel, and then from the tire to the outside ring, it was added on, which ends up being 59 inches when you measure it against the wheel. So that's kind of the way I came up with a formula for doing everything. And again, they're not made all the same. Here's one right here. Look at this here. This one right here. You can't really see it very well. The first line right here. Okay. That's the one that I saw on the internet as far as the dimensions came up. But I want mine closer up. The ones I looked at that had this doorway lining up with the, the, steering, the wheel? steering wheel edge in the column. <coughs> so right here where it goes, uh, this was the old line that I saw. When I, I looked online for the, uh, at this picture, this is what this one looked like. I saw some other ones that were out here that lined up exactly with the wheel mounts where the column is. And that's what I want to go with because it makes it more of a C, completes it better. Yeah, because some of the pictures we were looking at, it wasn't a complete C. It would, it would go like up to this section nice and then the angle wasn't... It, it was, wasn't. It was different. It wasn't. It wasn't mm -hmm. a, a circle, which we're going to mm -hmm. try and keep it to a circle, an arc. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens when it's all done with that. Um, as far as back here, what we're doing right here is we decided y you have to use this first. You got to go lengthwise. I wanted to go side to side first and then do my boards on top of it. That won't work because we need to clear the rear end bracket the springs. So the only real way to do that was to put this down first, then these, I mean this down first, then the cross braces, and then go back the other way with our floor. Now when we do our floor, now it, and then you can clear, we're going to leave it set back this far, and we're going to do this hack away. We're not going to, you know, I don't know what they used originally as far as doing this. We're just going to use three-inch screws and call it good. Um, it, it's not like we're going to drive the thing like it was originally rotted through old dirt roads or anything so screws should hold it just fine and that'll give us room for our door and our braces and whatever else that are, are going to be standing up and I've got one cut out and I you know one thing I couldn't find online which I wish I could have because I'd really like to do it I don't know how much time it would have taken but a lot of times these have a double curve there's the curve here that comes down and we went with an 18 inch height about and then just cut down from there and then, well, it's 18 inches to the flat. And so you go flat a little while and you let it taper Do you down. have a board like that? Yeah, it's right there. So I can just kind of show it you. It needs to be sanded up finally. But. So there's, there it is that we trimmed off there. So, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry I wanted to explain that. And so then we're going to, these are, are uh, that's what I was cutting right there, the, the new boards. These boards that were on here were just the old ones that were sitting there. But these ones will go in here and they're tapered to go along with that. Oh, curve. I see. Yep, yep, yep. So 
just so it doesn't look totally funky from the back having this butt it'll kind of match up with that on the back side that'll be good um, and then we've got this will line up our doors will just come to the edge of these boards so our doors will build those two and they'll just be flat now what I was talking about about the double curve they've got a curve here if you look at some of them they're really sharp to where it's a little extra curve right here I don't know how they do that you know I couldn't find any pictures to show how they do it you know I could have done a four by four and then double dub, do a double cut and then you know I could have I, who knows I could have cut something else to where it does it here and I just didn't want to mess with a whole bunch of stuff because we're trying to get this done in six weeks <laughs> so. with with paint everything done just roll it out of here drive it out of here in six weeks this thing does run and drive it needs bands in the transmission but it does run and drive pretty good so then everything will be flush with this board right here yep it's just going to be flat and you know for the windows what we decided to do which we'll explain later is uh, just get on eBay and look for some old-fashioned oval wood window trims. So once you clad the thing, you can use the wood windows. And if I can get the bubble windows, they got the antique bubbles in them. You can probably get a set of them about the right size for, I'm hoping, for 50 bucks. Um, might have to pay 100 for them if you really wanted the bubbles. But I thought the bubble windows would look kind of cool. And Very original, yeah. yeah. So I guess that kind of updates it for where we're at right now. We made an order today for um, paint. Yeah, you know, we're going to POR the, the whole thing. We're going to do pour 15 on the underside, and I'm not going to worry about doing any chassis code or anything like that, which is uh, pour 15 is sensitive to UV uh, rays, but we're going to use, uh, you know, so you'd want to spray, uh, you know, I think they call it black coat or gloss black. I think they changed the name to gloss black. But it's a top coat that's not UV sensitive. But we're just going to leave the chassis. We'll just do that. And then what we're going to do, is on the fenders, after we've stripped them, we're gonna POR them and then use their tie coat. And their tie primer will allow us to, you know, use any fill we got right over there. We fill we need to do right over the top of the fenders. Plus it's a, it's like a sandable primer as well. I guess it's got filled. I've never used the stuff, we'll see how it works. And then once we're done with that, we are gonna just black coat the whole thing. It'll look really nice. Yeah, it'll so look nice base. And then we're going to, the other thing so is. Well, that way it'll be hard as nails. And the black coat is hard. It's a single stage type of a thing. You just spray it on and hopefully it turns out all right. If not, well, you can always clear coat it, I suppose, and do something else. But yeah. I think the black coat will look pretty decent. It's, again, it's a 100-year-old tee. We kind of want it to look a little bit rustic. We don't want it to be nice, but we don't want it to look like it's, you know, some new show car either. Yeah. And the other thing is that this, you know, what he's building right here is of course is the floor but the frame of it will be wood he'll do the all of it in wood but then he's going to clad it all in, in uh, sheet metal so really it makes sense because it'll be like a big magnet <laughs> yeah. we could stick anything on it as far as advertising which is great that's another thing i wanted to say too is you know again some guys may hack me up for uh you know, using solid wood on the thing, or using a, a just normal two by fours. Cheaper and this wood. is all treated, by the way. It doesn't look like it, but this is old wood that we picked up from Menards. They were clearance it out. It was all treated, something they were using for shelves or something at Menards outside. And we just bought all this treated wood for some discount, crazy discount. So uh, we thought, why not use it for that? The one thing I did want to stay away from is, you know, I want it to look like it's at face value, look like it's something built back then so there'll be no plywood in this thing um, even if I build the floors when I build the floors they're not going to be plywood I don't want any plywood if I can help it if I do something temporary maybe but I really don't want any plywood in the thing I don't mind having something that's two by fours and, and that aren't oak but I do want it to kind of stay away from the stuff they wouldn't use back then yeah that sounds good except for the screws yeah I screws. am too lazy to sit there and twist in regular head screws or nails. Flatheads, or they didn't want to use nails. I think they use carriage bolts on everything. Oh, I bet you're right. With square nuts. So that's another thing we're not doing either. I'm not so, oh, no, nuts. I'm not doing square nuts. I'm using carriage bolts, but no square nuts. Forget that. Yeah. No square nuts, no slotted regular head screws. <laughs> so we'll give you an update when we get a little farther, and so that's it for today. So these are the your side panels, braces, that will go along the sides, and I've got this curved cut in them. Um, we just used a sawzall and just roughed them out. And as you can see here, they come out pretty uneven. And so then you'll want to sand them down to get them somewhat 
even because you don't want to when you put your metal on, not that you'll be screwing in, but you will on the bottoms and on the tops where you're going to put, be putting uh, where the seam will go down the middle of the car. But uh, So in order to get it close, what we did is we had some 24 grit. You want to get as rough a grit as you can, and I just put it on a stinking buffer wheel, and it's got a kind of a little backing plate on it. And it does a pretty good job. Uh, like I said, it was kind of uneven like this. So then we'll get it close and to where they're all even across, and then we'll hit it with the, again, it doesn't have to be anything heavy, I mean light, it doesn't have to be smooth. You're not going to finish it or nothing. You just want it flat so when you put the metal on it. so You just want it to be uniform all the same. Yeah, so that way when you put it together, it doesn't dent the metal or have any dents in the metal. And I don't know. I'm going to seam this probably with um, liquid nails or something like that to help it keep it from flopping. But 36 grit should be fine for the belt sander after we're done. We'll show you when we're finished. Yeah. But you can see it starts out pretty rough and uneven. And but, the, the reason why he's got these all together, um, he's got them all pre-cut ready to go. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five. These go for the middle yeah. because we're going to have it open on the sides. And this is the ends right here. And so these there's, are the very... So these ones right here go in the very back. The door is. No, those are the middle. The back are over here. This is the door. Yeah. Okay, and then this is the middle. Yep. And then all those... The front toward, in the middle of the front, it's, it's one back. I see. And then there was one for the, for the front, and then... One, four, one, two, three, four, five. Where's the sixth one? That's what I was wondering, why there should be one more. There should be an even number. Don't! Oh, we gotta cut one more. Anyway, we'll cut that and put it in the mix and, and oh, we uh, did. sand them all down and get them, get them straight. So, that pretty much finishes them off. Uh, I cross cut it this way first, just to get them all e even and flat and then went back this way to make, to make sure that the curve was a nice even curve so that way it doesn't have any dips in it or anything. So we added the extra one, cut that out and added that. So we've got them all now. Now it's just a matter of assembling the frame. But the top of this isn't very sanded. It doesn't matter. It's, that's okay. where it levels out. Okay, I just wanted to be sure that yeah. it looks good. So now they're all the same.